Hello everyone, Ian here from Able City in Burbank, and today we are checking out mix pre uh, recorders from sound devices. These are a combination of mixer and recorders in these ultra compact uh, designs. These are very feature rich uh, devices, and it's beyond the scope of this blog to go in and show you all those. There's lots of resources out there for this type of thing. What I want to concentrate on today is their relationship to camcorders. And as you can see, the number on each of these units uh, notes the type or the amount of inputs capable uh, into these units. So as you can see, we can get pretty complex with the uh, amount of inputs and uh, be able to record those inputs discreetly. In addition to that, we can then send a mix down to the camera so that editors get a uh, sort of a pre mix down idea of uh, what was happening on set, but still have the ability to go back to those discrete tracks and really fine tune that audio. So I want to look at that relationship between these units and the camcorders. They also have another feature which is the ability to record audio through a USB connection. So this opens up a whole bunch of uh, capabilities. Any kind of content uh, with audio through a USB connection can be recorded here. So I'm going to uh, hook it up to my Mac laptop and show you menus and some of the options uh, with that option as well. Before I have everything built, I wanted to show you the back panel here. This is the Mix Pre 6. This compartment right here, this holds four AA batteries. This is the stock back that comes with the unit. And if I pull this off, you see that it reveals four AA's. Should regard those AA battery option as sort of a temporary. Uh, there are accessories that can be purchased and installed on the back. For instance, you can use uh, Sony L batteries, which is a more reasonable option in terms of uh, running life on the uh, recorder. In here we have a uh, Allen wrench. It's really ingenious. It's held in place by a little magnet uh, under the tie down there. And also notice above is where the SD card is held for your recordings. On the base you have uh, this receptacle here. So this is doing double duty. The uh, wrench is going to go into here and that will tie down the quarter 20 to the camera. And then uh, the threading down here is for your camera plate. All right, we're looking at the MixPre 6. Uh, from operator point of view, this is the left hand side. And we have the inputs, uh, two of the inputs of the 6 potential on this uh, recorder. And those connectors are combo. They are XLR3. They are also TRS. So TRS takes a phone jack input. Uh, we are going to put our microphone into channel one using an XLR3. So line that up. All right. And then to take the signal out to my camera, I'm going to go from this stereo out. The stereo out three and a half millimeter. So I have a cable. It has this single uh, mini connector on this end and it has two XLR3s that will go into the camera. You could always have just one XLR3 and most uh, camcorders allow you to uh, input audio on channel one but also simultaneously record it on track two which is nice because you can uh, change the levels for uh, each track and it gives the post folks uh, different levels of recording to work with. From operator's point of view, uh, this is the right hand side. And again, we have two more of the XLR3 uh, TRS combo connector. And we also have the aux mic in, which is a mini connector. Then right here, input for our headphones. And then we have uh, this rotary knob here. And that rotary knob uh, serves uh, multiple functions. It really depends on uh, what we're working on or what uh, we're trying to adjust in the recorder. And then a uh, HDMI connection. This allows us to pull time code from our camcorder. I'll show you in menus on the camera how we do that. But the nice thing is that now the uh, camera and the recorder share common time code, which will uh, expedite syncing up footage uh, in post. I've powered up the MixPre 6 and you notice that on 
uh, the top here, you have L and R, left and right channel. That is uh, the uh, mix down that is going to uh, out to my camera. That's also being recorded separate from number one. Notice how number one has uh, a red background to it. That's uh, called armed, meaning that it is ready to record. But right now what I'm doing is I'm sending tone out to the camera to set the level uh, for the camcorder. And to navigate into menus on this unit, we're going to tap on the square with the three black lines. And now you have the menu and notice that uh, there's three pages. So I have page one with the black dot. I'm gonna tap again. And there's my tone. It's green, so indicating that it's active. I'm gonna tap on that. And notice that it's at minus 20. I'm gonna tap on the on, turn it off, and then go home. Now you can see a little activity here. I've got a microphone plugged in. Uh, and so I'm only recording on channel one right now. So I am recording uh, channel one, but I'm also uh, recording a left and right out or in addition to track one. So for as many inputs as I have, uh, the mix of those microphones will be recorded to the SD card as a left and right track. This is really helpful for editors who just want uh, a reference track to the audio. Uh, they'll probably do a uh, post audio mix down of the discrete tracks later on. But it's a really nice uh, feature of this. Uh, it allows you to uh, have a, a quick uh, reference to what was recorded. Now, in terms of going in and working with the menus, if you've worked with any sound device product prior to this one, uh, the menus are very familiar. It's going to be very easy and very intuitive to work with this. But if you're not uh, working with those units, uh, a quick uh, run through on how to set up the levels. If I want to go into a track, I simply have to push in on the knob and now it shows me uh, the things I need the most uh, to go into a specific discrete track and change it. So for instance, if I wanna change uh, the level of the recording, I can go in here on the game, and I'm gonna use the same knob uh, that also is used for your headphone level, and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna roll that. Oh, let me make it active. Okay, there we go. And now you can see that my gain has increased. And again, you have the same uh, control here. You also have a pan control. Uh, also notice that each of the tracks, well, one through four, that we see right now, uh, five and six are allocated to a different uh, menu setup. But for right now, we're just looking at number one. And notice that it glows uh, based on the level or the volume of the sound coming into that track. I'm going to just snap my finger right by the mat, by the mic. All right, and you see where it, okay, that red is indicating to me that it is clipping out. That is not gonna be uh, usable audio. So there's three levels of color here. You have green, you have yellow, and then you have red. So uh, you can, without having a uh, visual on your meters, be able to visually see a color cue uh, while you're working. All right, I'm gonna, also you have the solo. So if you have multiple mics put into this thing and you wanna just look at one microphone and isolate it and check its level, this is a, or just listen to it even, uh, this is a great uh, feature. So I'm gonna go home. And again, this is sort of the default I've got running right now. But if I want to change that setup, I just have to tap on the menu, and now I can go into uh, different formats for looking at audio. So left and right, again, back to my channel one, left and right. And then you have this one that's U1 and U2. This is for uh, USB. I'll show you USB recording in just a moment. It opens up a really interesting opportunity with these recorders to be able to take audio to and from 
uh, different sources using a USB connector. USB connectors can also be used as a source for powering this, but you need to be careful about the uh, power requirements of this unit with USB connections. One of the interesting capabilities of the MixPre line is the ability to record audio through a USB source. And by doing so, you're able to record uh, any kind of audio that you might be able to bring up on a laptop. So I have brought up a blog here on my, web, on my website and I have a supplied USB cable uh, that comes with a MixPre. It's USB standard uh, split to a USB-C. The USB-C is going to go into my MixPre 6 and I'm going to plug these USBs into my laptop and record some audio from our website. I've opened up the preferences on my Mac laptop and I'm going to go to the sound tab and notice the only thing selected here are internal speakers. I'm going to plug in the USB-C to my mix pre and as soon as I do that notice that it detects it and now we are set up. Just important to note that you have to go into the output of your audio and tell it to go to mix pre. All right, so I have connected all the USB connections. Notice in the upper right-hand corner of my LCD, you've got this little icon that is telling me that a uh, USB has been connected to it. Now I need to get the signal in here. I'm just going to hit the space bar on my laptop here. You can kind of see that visual in the background. I'm definitely getting some kind of content playing there, but I'm not getting a level. So let's see why. I'm going to push in on number one. That takes me to my... Uh, menus for input one and we're going to go to our middle menu so I tap one in the center and you can see that the input is set for a mic so I'm going to tap that and I'm going to use the encoder knob the rotary knob here and I'm going to roll through until I get to USB okay I'm going to choose USB one I could uh, select it here or I could so there's USB 1, or I could use the uh, encoder knob. Go home, and now I'm going to roll again on my laptop, and you can see now I'm getting a signal uh, through my USB. And again, that confirms on my other menu. If I tap through, okay. So we're getting everything uh, that we want from the laptop here. Now, if I want to adjust that level, the level looks pretty good here. It's around minus 20. Let's just say we wanted to fine tune it a little bit. In order to do that, I need to go back to my laptop and I'm going to physically change the uh, value of the output from my laptop. So here I'm going to scroll up and make it a little louder. Okay, you can see, yep, there it goes. All right, now I'm going to scroll back down. And I want to get it back into this around the minus 20 mark. There we go. That seems pretty good. So now I have minus 20 uh, on my, well, it just peaks up a little bit there, but average around minus 20. And that is for our discrete track, which is number one. And above that, the left and right, that is the stereo mix down of all potential inputs I could have on this unit. Now, interesting thing that you can do in this scenario is if I hit the fader or turn the fader knob here, notice I'm going to get a decibel value change. It says fader one and I've taken it up to five dB. Notice what's happened now. The mix down track is being recorded a little hotter than the discrete track of channel one. Now, this is interesting because you can now uh, record at a certain level for a discrete input. But for the mix down, you could change that and give them uh, a different level for the mix down. So I'm going to take this back to zero. Now we're in unity. And if I want to turn this down, make it a little less hot. There you go, minus six. And now it's being the stereo mix is being recorded a little lower than our discrete track. That wraps up my look at mixed pre-recorders from Sound Devices. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.